Hey guys, John Conley here from UncleJohnSoap.com. So I know it's been a while since I've done a video. I apologize for that. Besides the fact that I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants normally anyway, we're actually getting ready to move our shop. It's kind of sad, but kind of exciting. Definitely a double-edged sword there. The space we have here to work in, the retail is okay. I could make that work, but the, the actual workspace back here is just way too small for us anymore. It's hard to keep up with production when you have limited storage. So we're moving just around the corner. I mean like 100 feet from here, literally, uh, to a bigger shop. So keep an eye out for that, especially my locals um, or people that come down to visit us at the shop. Uh, keep an eye on social media. Uh, we'll be announcing as we go, but definitely by the end of this month, by the 1st of February, we will be operational in our new space. So exciting stuff. And that address is uh, 12 Pitt Street here in Berlin, Maryland. So yay, exciting stuff. On the downside, as disorganized as, disorganized as I am normally, it's gotten twice as bad since we started planning for a move. So, but we're clearing stuff out, getting rid of things that we don't normally need anyway. We're figuring it all out as we go. Now, on to the subject at hand. So, I see a lot of stuff getting volleyed back and forth on the soap making groups on Facebook and all over the internet and blogs and things like that. One of the hot topics is olive oil. You know, I, I hear people talking about only using extra virgin olive oil or only going to a certain source for olive oil because the others are fake. Let me let you in on a little secret, guys. 90% roughly estimated 90% of what you buy out there is going to be adulterated in some way, shape or form as far as olive oil goes. I know it's sad, but it's true. You see the stuff that says, uh, at the big box store that says hundred percent pure olive oil, probably not. It does act like regular olive oil in soap recipes. So that's good. But I got to tell you, when you're making a product like soap, bath soap, we'll just stick with that for now. When you're making a product like bath soap, if you want olive oil in it, you can buy a really high grade, 100% provable, unadulterated olive oil. It's tough, but it can be done. But there's a lot of factors you got to look for, a lot of work you got to go through. And your cost is going to be about five to 10 times higher than your average regular off the shelf olive oil. Nobody's going to buy that soap. Hate to tell you because the cost is going to be so prohibitive for soap making. I mean, it's all I can do to buy the, you know, the really top shelf stuff for cooking sometimes because it is costly. And you know, when you're talking about making five, 10, 20, 50 pound batches of soap, come on guys. I mean, what's 10 gallons of olive oil going to cost you in a big batch of soap? If you go for the top shelf, triple certified, you know, unadulterated stuff, which may still have been stepped on a little bit, is it, are you going to be able to sell that bar for $15, $16 a bar? I doubt it. You know, at some point, you kind of got to pick and choose your battles. We use a, a brand that claims it's 100% pure olive oil. Now, it could be... Now, part of what people get upset about too is certain processes of, of deriving your olive oil. And olive oil comes from all over the world. Spain, uh, Tunisia, um, Italy, Australia, several places like that, Chile, um, Chile. Honestly, the, the most trusted ones in the market, as far as restaurateurs, as far as what they trust, the five-star places, a lot of olive oil from Australia and Chile believe it or not. A lot of the stuff from Italy is not from Italy. They import and export. They are the largest importer and exporter of olives and olive oil on the market. A lot of the stuff they get, they'll get some high quality produced stuff. They'll get some low quality produced stuff and blend them. They're always, almost always going to be blended from the bigger companies. Um, some of it is natural pressed. Some of it is chemical extracted, um, which isn't always bad. I mean, it just depends on the, the, the process, but you don't know which one is which and where it came from. There is no strict guideline to that. And up until recently, the USDA never went after 
counterfeit oils or adulterated oils and things like that until recently Congress started um, trying to get the USDA to, not the USDA, FDA, maybe it was both, but to try to get them to check into the olive oils and, and start coming up with a way to grade them and things like that. Because what happens is a lot of the oils that are adulterated are blended off with seed oils. And some people have allergies to certain seed oils. So you can see where that would be a problem. And I think that's their main, their main thing right there. But even though Italy has very strict guidelines, and so does Spain. Spain actually produces more than Italy, but they export it to Italy. Um, so even though there are technically strict guidelines in the process from manufacture to sale, um, there's a lot of opportunities for that to be, and it's not always legal, but there, there are tons of legal ways to do it too, where you can blend off with other portions and things like that of olive oil. And it helps produce a cheaper oil, but it's not always on the up and up. So, you know, there's so many other things to worry about when you're making your soap. Sometimes you just got to pick and choose your battles, guys. Um, you know, and that's with any oils, any fats, lard, tallow, olive oil, coconut oil, Palm oil, sustainable, non-sustainable. S- seriously, guys, there's no way to tell ultimately unless you are the one doing the process or you know the people doing that process and you trust them. Otherwise, honey's the same way. Unless you pulled it right out of the hive yourself or your best friend did it and put it right in the jar and handed it to you, you have no way of knowing what that honey was mixed with. To, to, you know, pad their wallet or their inventory or whatever. So the bottom line is, you know, be educated about what you're going to get, what you're buying, but don't get too caught up in always going for the top shelf, most expensive stuff, because in the long run, it's really not any better. And I had somebody argue with me the other day about, well, the stuff I buy, you can tell because it has a certain taste and a certain smell and it's that dark green, you know, extra virgin olive oil. Guess what? Even the thick, dark green stuff that we all sort of equate to really high quality olive oil when we taste it is not usually 100% olive oil, especially not 100% extra virgin olive oil. That color doesn't mean squat. You can sort of do a halfway test by putting the oil in your refrigerator. A really high quality extra virgin olive oil will not only cloud up, but it will clot not clot, it'll, it'll solidify in your fridge. So that's one way to sort of tell if you're getting close to the real deal, but even then it's no guarantee. Almost all the oils I buy that are liquid will cloud up in cold weather. So can't always go by that, but the thickness, the viscosity will change in cold and that might get you a little closer, but honestly, folks, we're making soap. And if you're adding other things to it, it's still a great bar of soap. I don't care what anybody says. If you get your proportions right and your lie ratios right and things like that, and you pay attention to the process that you're doing, you're making a really good bar of soap once you know what you're doing. If you're going to keep chasing after the white whale of the, you know, high quality, real olive oil, um, you are definitely going to chase your tail because I don't care. You could go buy the stuff in the metal old one gallon square tins and it's still going to be stepped on. I almost guarantee it. The closest you're going to get, like I said, according to any studies that I've read up on from, you know, like I said, uh, restaurateurs and things like that. And, you know, five star chefs, you know, the two places to look, like I said, is Australia and Chile. And even then there's a good opportunity. There's a good chance that that stuff was cut with something else other than olive oil, if not a lower grade of olive oil along the way. Yeah. Unless you're pressing your own olives, folks. It's just one of those things that you kind of got to work around. These battles over quality of oils, they've been raging on for centuries. Olive oil forever has been adulterated and cut and things like that. And there's no, unless you get in a lab, there's no real test to see if it's real. So, all right, guys, I hope that helps you out some. Honestly, oops, hit my mic. Honestly, there's nothing wrong. You can do a canola oil and coconut oil and whatever soap. You can use sunflower oil. You got to watch, you got to watch your amounts 
your, your ratios for certain oils because they will tend to go rancid or give you the dreaded orange spots eventually, some of them. And some of that doesn't even have anything to do with the oils. It has to do with the way it was prepared, the way it was mixed. Was it rancid when you used it to make soap? How high is your super fat? What's the humidity like in your climate? So, you know, be flexible. It's soap making, guys. If we wanted it to be an exact science for us, it wouldn't be handmade. We'd be in a factory and we'd be machine pressing all these, extruding them under high pressure. Oh, yeah, that's another thing that drives me nuts. Milling. All you guys that say you're making triple milled soap, stop it. You're not making triple milled soap. You're making a graded rebatch soap. It's different, but that's another video. As always, leave a comment down below if you have any questions or comments. Uh, email me at UncleJohnSoap at gmail.com. And uh, if you like this, you get anything out of me running my mouth on here, uh, click the subscribe button and you can hit the little bell icon. That way you'll get a notification when I put a video up randomly like I did today. All right, guys. See you.